Good morning, everyone, and welcome as you join us wherever you are uh, this morning on this Monday, Thursday morning, the day we traditionally celebrate the Last Supper. And Jesus was with the full company of his disciples for the last time before his death. A day, indeed, we also remember Judas's betrayal of Jesus as well. I want to take you to John's Gospel this morning, John chapter 13, and reading three short verses, verses 33, 34, and 35. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And may God bless his word to us this morning. This is a short uh, little passage at the end of what we know as Jesus washing the disciples' feet on that Monday, Thursday. And here he is urging the disciples to love one another. And what can that mean to us today as well? What could the scriptures be saying to us in our own context today? When I was a teenager, I had an awful trouble with my feet. I had lots of ingrown toenails over a period of time. Not very pleasant, I know. But there was something that I had to bother with as a teenager. And I went and they were all localised uh, procedures that were done to get rid of them. And by the last one that was finished, I really could do the procedure probably myself after seeing it so many times. But feet, feet aren't particularly nice things, not to me anyway. And I do take my hat off to chiropodists and podiatrists and people that work with feet on a professional level. They're not the most pleasant of things, certainly in my uh, estimation. But we know that in Jesus' time that sandals were worn in the warm countries and a lot of sand and desert was around. And you can imagine the feet picking up everything that was going. Dust sores of all kinds and Jesus came to wash the disciples feet at the last supper it was one of the last things he did for the disciples before he died it was one of the most humble things that he did as well and here he is exemplifying the servant heart of God Remembering that he is God himself, and yet here he is on his knees, washing the disciples' feet. God incarnate in a servant heart for his children. And of course, Simon Peter, being the impetuous one, didn't want Jesus to wash his feet because he felt that was not the place that Jesus should be doing that. But then when Jesus says to him, until I wash you, you have no share with me. And Peter then wants all of himself washed and immersed in the person of Jesus, the symbolism around this as well. Jesus says, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet and then is entirely clean. And our feet are wonderful things. They support us. They carry us. They take us from place to place. We should take care of them and look after them. And this commandment, this new commandment that Jesus gives is one of love, one for another. To love another person truly is to be their servant to love another person another person as god loves us is to be their servant 
It's almost like putting them in front of yourself nearly all the time. And that's quite a challenge. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, says Jesus. And that is for the ongoing cohesion of the disciples themselves in the days to come. But it also speaks to us as well who follow Christ, that we should love one another. Love should not be a duty. Love should come because we want to do it. Love should come because we want to do it. God created you and me because he wanted to do it, not out of duty, but out of love. He created you and me. He died because he wanted to do that out of love. There was a need to do it as well, to save people from their sins. But he went willingly to the cross to do that out of love. A new commandment I give you that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. And herein lies a challenge. As God loves us, and he does unconditionally. The challenge is, if we are to love one another as God has instructed, how can we do that without first knowing God's love in our lives? And that commands a response. God loves us unconditionally no matter what and how we respond to him. But an extension of that, to love one another as God has ordained it. How can we do it without knowing God's love ourselves and have responded to that by giving our love back to him in relationship with him? Love is based on relationship. And God is an imminent God. He is with us at all times, wanting us to know his love, to respond to that love, and then to give that love away to others as well. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. It is a challenge for us today. And on this Monday, Thursday, let us think as Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. Is our love like that one for another? That we can love everyone. We're not called to like everyone. That will be impossible because we like other people more than others. Because we connect with others in different ways. But to love one another is imperative with God's love. If we follow him. If we know God's love and have received it for ourselves, then by extension, to love one another in God's love. We will never get it always right. We're not perfect. But it is a command and a challenge by the Holy Spirit indwelling within us that we can love one another as God has instructed. It can be sacrificial. It can be love that is not returned to us, not evidently anyway, but we must do it. And as the body of Christ, God's church on earth, it is the most cohesive force that we have when we work together in love. Because when God's love is present, it will unfold to the wider world. It will stand as a witness and a light to the wider world. And that love will shine out of his church and continue to do so in our world. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your love for us. A love that went willingly to the cross to die for each and every one of us. Because you wanted to do that. There was a need, of course, that we needed the forgiveness of sins. And that's the way... You wanted to do it. You could have done it in many, many different ways, but you chose the way of the cross. Lord, a sacrificial love, a love of humility, a love in servitude to others. As you wash the disciples' feet, it wasn't just to clean their feet. 
is to show your servant heart and that Lord if you are master and do servant work then we certainly must serve as you have shown us father as the commandment came at the last supper love one another as i have loved you lord how can we love one another truly in god's love without knowing your love first in our lives and receiving it responding to it and we see that through the cross and we can own that for ourselves and lord that we too can live sacrificial lives for others and to love others the challenge is indeed to do that even people we don't like or people we perceive as enemies lord we're asked to love them and lord the mark of the disciple is seen in that love and may your church today continue to radiate that love into the world that others too can accept it receive it as they respond to it as well and we ask it in jesus name amen and father as others are sacrificing at this time too for those in need we remember those who continue to suffer at this time particularly from covid19 we pray you will be with them in healing in comfort and in strength we pray for those who are sacrificing their lives and risking themselves on the front line be with them and all who are in working essentially at this time keep them safe protect them and father remember those who continue to walk a path of grief at this time father be with them those who have lost loved ones particularly through the virus they may know your peace your comfort and your strength and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. May I commend you uh, to, certainly if you're around at 7 o'clock this evening, uh, there is a service of Holy Communion on Monday, Thursday evening. That's this evening at 7pm. You're very welcome to join us again. And there also will be time around the cross at 3pm tomorrow Good Friday again, if you're free, do join us there as well. And service of Holy Communion then on Easter morning as well at 11am. May God bless you and keep you safe. Amen.